Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how I put together these adorable coastal fall DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree and maybe a few items from the Dollar Spot at Target. I had a great time decorating my cabinet for fall and let's get started on the first DIY. I got two of these fall signs at Dollar Tree the other day and they're finally starting to trickle in a few fall items. And I thought I could make one of those cutting board trays, um, like a raised tray with these little cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. Now, they don't have to be the same sign. Mine are, you're not gonna see that because we are going to DIY this. So I'm gonna use my favorite removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree, the blue with the tropical blue leaf. And I'm just gonna use an ink pen to draw around one of the cutting boards so that I can just cut the wallpaper out to size um, to begin with. And I want to cover the top of my cutting board tray with that. I know it doesn't really scream fall, like the blue with the palm leaves, but I have a coastal house, so I try to make anything and everything coastal. This tray, though, is going to be universal. You could use it for any season. We're going to load it up with fall DIYs today. So once I get it cut out, I'm actually going to peel it off and stick it to the back of that cutting board. The reason that I'm using the back is because there's glitter and all that stuff on the other side and I want a nice, clean, flat surface for my removable wallpaper. And I'm so excited that all my Dollar Trees are getting this removable wallpaper in. It's always just been like my largest Dollar Tree had it, but now they're all getting it in and it's so fun to DIY with. So I'm just gonna make sure that I have that good and secure and I didn't get it on there perfect. So to solve that, I'm just gonna go around any of the edges that were kind of peeking out a little bit and sand those off with just a sanding block from the Dollar Tree. And it kind of gives me kind of a white um, distressed look around the edges as well, which is totally gonna go with the coastal vibe in my house. And I just wanted to kind of do this tray to stack a bunch of fall items on and around. And I want it to be thick. So I thought I could use wood beads in between. I'm gonna use the um, cube wood beads from the Dollar Tree. Um, I did my watermelon tear tray with the round beads and that turned out really well too. Um, sandwiching two thin signs together. And so I'm gonna to try to do that today but with the cube beads. Now, if you can't find these wood beads at your Dollar Tree, I ordered them personally a whole case um, from their website and they shipped them for free to my store. Half of them were round and half of them were cube shaped. And I haven't really used the cube shapes for anything. And so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to try them out. And I am just simply hot gluing the beads all the way around. I'm leaving them strung. When I start a new one though, I do untie the first bead so that it's free to move. And then to get this going, I'm just gonna tie that together and then just keep moving along. Two of the packages of wood beads was almost enough. I get to the end and I'm short just like a couple of beads that I had to take off of the third one. But you can use whatever wood beads that you have. Um, you're just basically wanting to line the edges. And so our final project will be thick. I'm gonna tie just the rope off there at the end, make sure that's all glued down. And then I'm also gonna do a row of them in the middle because we all know Dollar Tree signs are thin and they can bow and I don't want that. I want it to be secure and flat. The bottom and the top, I want them to be flat and not bowed at all. Now, I kind of thought about leaving them like the natural wood color because that's kind of beachy and coastal, 
but then I decided that I really wanted them to be ivory. So I'm just going in with a brush and some ivory acrylic paint and I am painting the sides of the beads and kind of the edge of the cutting board that you can see in this ivory color and just a very um, messy like light distress, very coastal. I don't want to get any on the top um, of the beads because I'm going to glue that on to our other cutting board sign. I just love how this turned out. It's really like a substantial size and it makes just a really cute tray. So I'm just gonna go ahead just to make it look more finished. This is gonna be the bottom, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use that ivory acrylic and just do a slappy coat on the bottom just to make it a finished product, but you totally don't have to do this because you're not gonna be able to see that side. But I thought maybe sometimes I might wanna stand the tray up or something like that, and I just want it to be a finished product. So I just do one good coat and give that a quick dry. And then I noticed that you could kind of see the edges on the top cutting board, um, that they were brown and I had painted the beads and the side of the other cutting board ivory. So I'm just gonna use a tiny brush in that, YM, that ivory acrylic and I'm just gonna go all around. If I get any on my wallpaper, I'm just kind of wiping that off with a baby wipe. I thought it'd be easier to paint it now than when I get it all put together. And that looks pretty good. And I think we're about ready to put this tray together. I'm using hot glue, so I'm gonna act quickly and do a bead of hot glue around all the edges and that middle section. And we're just gonna attach it with hot glue. If you wanna use wood glue or whatever other kind of glue you have, it might be more secure, but this actually turned out really nice. When I glued it on, I made sure that I pushed in the center so that the signs in the middle would be glued together by those wood beads of the road that we did in the middle. And it turned out really nice and square, even though the signs were a little bit bowed to begin with. Now I'm gonna use some of these little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree to try to make four legs for our little tray. They're a little smaller than I would like. And so I'm gonna um, glue two together. And again, I'm just using hot glue, face to face gluing them together. And it's gonna give me a little bit of a chunkier leg than if I just use the Jenga block. But these are the perfect height for this tray. And I love DIYing with these. So once I get them all glued together, I'm just gonna go in and give them a coat of that ivory acrylic on all sides and on the bottom. Only leaving the top of them unfinished because I'm gonna glue that. And so there's no need to paint that part. And I'm gonna do just four legs, one in each corner of our tray. I don't really want you to see the crack in between them too much. Um, and so I gave them a nice coat of paint, but I'm not really using spackle or anything. I think that looks pretty good. And so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where I think the legs should go. I'm kind of leaving a border, but really working in the corner here. And I'm just attaching those again with hot glue. I like to use the Gorilla Glue hot glue. Um, I find it really works well on wood projects and it is actually pretty strong. So I'm gonna glue this side on as well. We are almost done with this first DIY. And that looks amazing. Now I kind of forgot about the hole in the cutting board on the handle and I covered that up with the contact paper and I never went back and cut that out. And so I thought I should cut it out. You totally don't have to. I'm gonna do it with just a razor blade, being very careful not to cut or rip the fabric um, anywhere that I don't want to. Just trying to kind of carve up next to the side of the hole in the wood and we have our little cut out there. Now, I thought it would look even cuter if we put like a rope in there, like a hanger, like you would have a hanging cutting board. 
I thought that seemed like that would be appropriate. So I'm gonna use some of this thinner brown rope from the Dollar Tree. I just have a scrap piece and I am just gonna tie it into a knot with both pieces of the rope and pull that tight. That's gonna give us a nice little coastal rustic handle on our tray and kind of adds to the charm of it. So cute. And we are ready to load this up with some fall DIYs. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like in my cabinet, but first we're gonna make some fall DIYs to decorate it so you can see it all decorated. I'm gonna use some of these burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. Just got those in at my Dollar Tree and one of these signs from the Dollar Tree. I thought this would be a really easy DIY and I was right. The little metal sign just pops right off these and it's got a nice wood stand, so it's perfect. I thought I would just make a little mounted leaf. I thought that sounded very simple and easy. So I'm just taking this burlap leaf. I don't really need the wire on there, so I'm just gonna use my heat gun to peel that off and then glue that same line onto our stand. I was trying to decide if I wanted the brown to show through or the white to show through on the front. I ended up going with the white, but I think it would look better either, and you'd find either way. But how easy was that DIY? And we have a little burlap leaf on display. Very fall, very cute. I love how that turned out. And I just stacked that on my tear tray. And I found this at the Target Dollar Spot. It was $3, but it's super cute. It's a white and tan acorn with their fall stuff they just got in at Target. I absolutely love it. The only thing I didn't like was that it was a little white and a little shiny. And so I'm just gonna go over it with some ivory acrylic and give it a very light distress with one of those chunky brushes from Dollar Tree just to take away that gloss and kind of have it match some of my ivory projects today. And I have that loaded right here on the front of our tray. So cute. <laughs> okay, I wanted to do a sign for our tear tray and I'm gonna use one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and some window clings from the Dollar Tree. These are new window clings in at Dollar Tree. And I wanna pop the back off this sign. This is a sign that I used for a previous DIY where I needed the flamingo off of it. They have the little bump out pieces. And I saved the sign because you know, crafter always saves. And I'm just gonna take the tag off the back so we have a nice smooth surface to work with. So we can decorate that with a window cling, which is such a fun, easy way to make a sign, especially if you don't have a Cricut. Just going over the back of that sign with a coat of ivory acrylic, kind of working in one direction. Kind of went a little crazy. I had a little bit too much paint on there. So I'm taking some of that back off. And I thought that would be a great background for a decal from the Dollar Tree. Now, I don't like to leave the backs of my pieces all crazy and such with all this going on back here. So I'm just gonna use some cheap contact paper from the Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna cut out a piece a little larger than the sign. So it'll go all the way to the edges. And then this stuff is super thin, so a sanding block is all it takes to give you a perfect seam around the edges. And now the back of my sign will look nice, which is great since it's on a tray as well. Now we're ready to attach the decal. I'm gonna use a coat of Mod Podge. Don't go too thick on this. I maybe want a little thick. And I'm using this great pumpkin decal that says leaves are falling, autumn is calling. It's that nice beachy blue or mint green color on there. It's so pretty. And I'm just gonna make sure that's smoothed down by using my scraper and my brayer to make sure it's nice and flat. I was trying to get, I had a little bit too much um, Mod Podge. And then using that extra Mod Podge to kind of go over it as well to make sure this decal is sealed down to that sign. And I love decorating with these decals from the Dollar Tree. I They're so cute and it's so inexpensive to make your very own sign. 
and I didn't even have to print anything. <laughs> so once I got the Mod Podge dry, I want it to look not so perfect like a window cling. And so I'm just gonna use some ivory acrylic and a chunky brush. And we're gonna do a very light dry brush working in one direction, just to break it up a little bit, kind of try to make it look more like a hand painted sign and less like a glossy decal. Now all I have to do is put it back together. Um, some of the staples or like nails kind of fell out with that when I took it apart. So I'm using hot glue to make sure it stays in and then kind of a hammer to make sure I can get it down in there. It was a little tricky putting that back together, but this is the final project and I think it's so cute. And it's the perfect piece here for the back of our tear tray, a nice fall sign and it gives me a little bit of height there on our tray. So pretty. Okay, our next DIY is going to be a sand pumpkin. My Dollar Tree just got these pumpkins and they're the velvet colored pumpkins. And I thought we could DIY this to make a coastal pumpkin for our tray. So the stem's really nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove that so that I can get to the velvet fabric and I am just gonna kind of clip that off around the top and remove the velvet fabric and then pull the center out, trying not to damage the styrofoam too much. And this is a really nice size pumpkin with a, a great detail on there. I thought we could make it into a sand pumpkin. So just using school glue, um, I get this at Target right now, back to school. It's on sale for like a quarter. And I'm doing a thick coat of school glue on the bottom half. So I'm working about halfway down. There's like kind of a line on there. You can kind of see where you need to go. And I thought we would go ahead and cover the bottom of the pumpkin with sand first. So I'm using this brown sand from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes my store doesn't have the brown and sometimes they have the white. Either one would be really cute. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that all over my school glue until I get a nice coat of sand on there. Now, normally when I do these projects, I use that spray adhesive, the aerosol can glue from Dollar Tree, but I was out of it today. So I found this at Dollar Tree. It's like a more of a pump spray school glue. And I just sprayed that all over and did a second coat of sand to make sure that it covers up all of the white styrofoam on the pumpkin below. And it actually worked really well. I think I may even prefer it over the spray adhesive because it, the spray is not quite as powerful. It's more of a pump, so it doesn't really blow any sand away or anything like that. So I'm just gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the top half, a thick coat of school glue, and then just sprinkle sand all around until it sticks, even here in the middle, because I don't know what part of that will be visible going all over it with that spray glue again so that I can go in there for a second coat of sand to make sure that our little sand pumpkin is completely covered. I love covering things with sand and a sand pumpkin makes me smile. I think it's so fun. So I'm gonna give that a quick dry and then I thought the stem was beautiful but it needed a little beachy coastal touch. So I'm just gonna use my chunky brush and a little ivory acrylic, and I'm just gonna go in and just distress it a little, leaving about half of the brown to show through. Just giving it a little bit more character before we pop that back into the top of our little pumpkin. This pumpkin was the perfect size for my tear tray. It's not really blocking my sign or anything like that. And it's definitely a nice beachy coastal touch to our fall tray. Isn't it cute? I love making these. I have a really large one that I made one time too um, with one of the big foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I always love bringing that out every year. This is how it looks on my tray with the sign and the leaf and the acorn. And this was the final beachy touch that I thought it needed. This is a sand dollar from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. They're a little gray for my liking, so I'm just gonna brighten it up a little bit with a little bit of ivory acrylic paint, just so it'll kind of match all the ivory whites that we got going on so far in these DIYs. And just making sure that I don't get um, too much down in the little holes to block that. 
And that's all that takes. I'm just gonna kind of stack that on our tray just to bring a coastal beachy touch to it. Just kind of leaning against the sign that we put together there. And that is how it looks on our shelf and our tray is complete with fall DIYs. Now I'm gonna decorate the area around it. I got this at the Goodwill store for half off. It was really cheap, really just scream fall to me. I have no idea what this is called. Do you guys know what it's called? If you do, comment down below because I have no idea. Is it like a broom? <laughs> I don't know. It reminds me of like, you know, an old straw broom. I don't know. It just looked coastal to me. And so we're going to use it. I just trimmed off a few pieces that were kind of browner than the others. But I'm going to kind of sit this next to our tray just to bring another fall touch in. Here's another pumpkin. I found this at the Target dollar spot for $3. It's covered in this beautiful braided sea grass and I love it. So I had to pick that up. They just got those in. And my Dollar Tree also got these in. I wanted to show this to you because it says pumpkin. They come in three different colors. I don't think it looks like a pumpkin though. I think it looks like an apple. And I'm gonna do some apple DIYs for fall. So I'm gonna save that for apple DIYs and use this for a fall pumpkin DIY because I think it looks way more like a pumpkin than the Dollar Tree version. Okay, I wanted to do like a little floral arrangement around the tray as well. And I found this great vase at the Dollar Tree. It's glass and it's got little bumps all over, which kind of reminded me of like a sea urchin. And then I found this greenery at the Target Dollar Spot. The little white leaves kind of scream fall to me. And the green leaves are kind of like my mint green that I use on a lot of my beachy DIYs. And I thought they would complement each other really well in a little floral piece here. I'm using ivory chalk paint. And I am painting all over this face, trying to give like a very thick, definitely not perfect paint job to it because I want this face to look like pottery and not like glass. So any imperfections in the paint and like my chalk paint's really thick and that kind of made it look even more like pottery. I have a problem with like my white and my ivory chalk paints. They really get thick really fast. Like this is not a very old jar. But in this DIY, it actually paid off because it gave me a really nice texture on there. And it's time for the greenery. This um, was $3 and it has three of the green leaves and two of the ivory or tan ones. And so I thought they were a little bit too tall for the shelf that we're gonna put them on. And so I'm just gonna use my floral scissors from the Dollar Tree and give them a quick trim. And so they're all about the same length, but a little bit shorter. And we are ready to fill up our new pot. I was gonna use all five, but the pot's not very big. So once I got four in there, it felt really full to me. So I think we'll just save the other leaf for another DIY. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so coastal, yet fallish. I really love these colors together. And I have it kind of behind my tray and behind that little pumpkin that I found at Target. And I really love that pot and that greenery. I think it's so pretty. Now this is how they all look like together. This is my bottom shelf. I love the tray that we did and I love all of those fall DIYs. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment to tell you guys about my Facebook group. I'll post a link below. You are gonna be blown away by all the crafty beach bums and their creativity on there. Everybody shows what they've been crafting. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you there. Now I found this wood leaf sign at the Dollar Tree. And then I thought we can make a sign for our shelf with it. Wanted to do something very simple, very beachy, very blue, but I needed a square sign to do it with. So I have this leftover from a previous, I think Christmas, and it's the perfect size. Um, and so I'm just taking the hanger off the back, trying to pop out the staple. So I have that, 
you know, that great surface at the back of the sign to work with to do a DIY today. It's a little jagged, so I was just giving it a quick sand around the edges. And it was a little bowed. Now, that does cause me some problems today, and so you'll see what I did to fix it. I probably should have done that to begin with, but I'm just going over the whole thing with ivory acrylic and giving me a nice sloppy beach coat. Doesn't have to be perfect. Most of this is gonna be covered up anyway, but the edges are exposed, and I want the background to be a nice white color as well. Now the sides were that brown, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint those as well, in case you can see that in the final product. Now I thought we could cover it with that placemat that I found and the leaf. But again, I don't wanna leave the back of my sign looking like this. And so I'm just cutting out a piece of that Dollar Tree vinyl in the wood and laying that on the back, trying to get it down as smooth as I can over all that glitter and mischief that Dollar Tree likes to put on their signs. Just so the back of my project will be nice and finished as well, just sanding off the excess vinyl with my sanding block. And while, if you guys are watching this video as soon as it drops, your girl is off in Hawaii celebrating our 20th wedding anniversary. And, oh, I hope I'm having fun. I'm so excited. Okay, this is a placemat that I just found at the Dollar Tree. It's my favorite color of beachy blue. And I thought it would make a great texture and color for a background for a sign. So I'm kind of measuring how long I need it. And then I'm just gonna carefully cut along that seam to give myself a straight line. I want a square. It was a little smaller than the sign. And so I made sure I made that a little smaller for the other direction. So there'll be a tiny white border all the way around. Now I'm using a really thick coat of Mod Podge to glue that down. And normally I would think that Mod Podge would work really well to hold down a placemat like this, but you might wanna go with a little bit of a stronger glue because I did have some issues with this. But I'm trying to make sure that it's all stuck and I'm still fighting that bow. And the, you know, this is why I hate crafting with Dollar Tree signs sometimes because they're so thin and I hate that they bow. Now this is not bowed, this is the fall leaf that I just got at the Dollar Tree. I was so excited, none of my Dollar Trees had any fall stuff and I just went into one. They had fall, they had Halloween, they had Thanksgiving. I couldn't believe my eyes. But look at the finish on this. It's got this beautiful stain on there and so I'm gonna leave it exactly as is. I love it, I think it looks coastal, I think it looks beachy. So I'm gonna just put hot glue on the back I'm gonna kind of tilt it to this side and glue that onto our placemat and our sign with the edges slightly overlapping. That's when I started having problems with the bowing. When the back sign was like kind of warped, it was causing the leaf to kind of pop up and not wanna stick down. Normally, when I have a sign like this at the Dollar Tree, when I add another sign to it like this, um, it kind of usually fixes that, but it really wasn't fixing it. <laughs> and I wish I had another sign the same size. I would have just put two together, but you'll see what I do to fix that. Now, I don't like the little hole in the top of the leaf, and I just fix that with a simple bow I tie out of twine from the Dollar Tree and hot glue that over the hole, and I don't have to worry about patching that. Now to fix the bowing, I thought I would make it into a like framed like box sign where the frame is behind the sign. It's definitely gonna have to be since the leaf like um, comes off the edges. And I got four pieces of this craft wood from the Dollar Tree. And before I start cutting them, I thought I would go ahead and give them a very sloppy coastal coat of ivory acrylic to kind of go with some of the other DIYs that we've made today. Leaving a lot of the wood to show through though. Now, once I get those dry, I can start cutting those. I'm gonna cut like the top and bottom side to side all the way. And then I'll cut the side pieces into fit because I'll have to work with the depth of the um, 
boards that I'm already putting on there. So I just attach that with a, hot, a bead of hot glue along the edges, trying to make sure I get that on there as square as possible. And then I can see how long I need to cut the other two boards. Again, just attaching that with a bead of hot glue. And I wanna get the corners really good and square. I think that's gonna help square up the whole piece. And so I just use a little tiny picture hanging um, nail and I nail my corners together. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side, gluing that inside, using a nail in each corner to make sure that the, the frame matches up and it stays together. And this fixed all my bowing issues on the sign. It is completely flat now and it looks great. But I thought it needed one more coastal touch. Kind of comparing a real starfish, I get these on Amazon versus the Dollar Tree one. I chose the real one, but it will look great with the Dollar Tree one as well. This is just a little daintier and a little bit more ivory color. I'm just gonna hot glue that kind of going straight up and down right in the center of our leaf. And this is how our sign turned out. It's so simple, but I really love it. I really like the wood, all the different colors in it with that fun beachy blue background. And I especially like the little starfish from there in front. It's so sweet. I love it. <laughs> okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these foam circles from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make a succulent pumpkin. <laughs> I know this isn't an oval shape, but we're gonna work with it because this is what we have. Now, I went and I got my succulent stash. I'm always picking these up from Dollar Tree because I love them. Now they're constructed differently. This one I noticed had a really thick wire in there with plastic molded around it. And so I tried to cut the wire and there was no luck. But when I pulled the wire out, it kind of made the two pieces go in half. And so I do kind of have to glue those two pieces back together, but I'm just gonna glue all of that into the center. And I just took the wire off that one completely. Now I want it to be an oval and it's a circle. And so I'm gonna work with the edges here to give me that oval shape. This one is constructed the same way with the thick wire um, covered in the plastic. And I'm just gonna remove the plastic and stick it all back together and then wedge that wire into the side of the foam so that that succulent can stick out more than if I put it on the front of the circle. And I am just kind of mixing and matching my colors. I'm really wanting to go with like a blue and a brownish. That one can go straight in. It's got a plastic pick. There, That's what I mean. They're all kind of just constructed differently. Kind of liked the plastic picks more than the wire, but these wire ones definitely work because I could just bend the wire and then go in the side. And that's going to give me that longer, you know, oval shape that I was going for. And I am just gonna keep kind of piecing these together, either stabbing it into the foam or gluing it on if it's just got a little bit of a plastic stem. Trying to alternate the colors up a little bit so we'll have lots of contrast. And I know a lot of people do like pumpkins and they fill them with succulents like a pot, which would be super cute. But I thought we could just make a whole pumpkin out of succulents. It just screams coastal beachy vibes. I love succulents. And these little faux ones from the Dollar Tree are adorable. So again, if you take it, they have the ones with the wires, they're gonna fall apart, but you can glue them back together. And that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go into the side of the foam on that one. Now y'all, be careful if you make this project because that wire in there, You'll see in a minute, I do hurt myself with this project pretty bad, actually. And it was one of my last DIYs before I go on vacation. I'm gonna use a wood stand. Um, this is just the round circle frame from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. I'm just taking out the picture, the staples. I just wanted something that could be a stand to hold the pumpkin up so it can sit on its side. 
Now, the base of it might be visible, so I'm just going over that raw wood with just a quick coat of ivory acrylic, letting some of the wood show through as well to give me that coastal beachy vibe. And in hindsight, this isn't quite strong enough um, base for this, but we fix it here in a minute. So I'm just gonna glue it to the back of our foam piece here. I like the circle shape because it's gonna hide nicely there behind our pumpkin and glue that on to that foam, which it crackles and pops with that hot glue. Now it looks kind of crazy in the back, so I thought I wanted to clean that up a little bit. I'm just gonna use um, some scrap burlap that I have left over from Walmart and just gonna hot glue that onto the back of our foam circle, kind of encapsulating the stand and everything, trying to make that look a little bit nicer along the back in case you see it back there. Then I'm just gonna trim all the way around the foam circle until we have a little burlap circle there on the back, which really helped. Now, there was like some gaps in between the succulents that you could kind of see the foam a little bit in. And so to cover that up, I'm just using some of this um, Spanish moss, couldn't think of the word, from Dollar Tree and just filling up any gaps. I'm not gluing it or anything in there. Um, there's enough pressure to kind of keep it in there. Just trying to, and it kind of gives a little character to all the succulents as well. And I think that looks really pretty. Made a mess, but pretty nonetheless. Now you can still see the sides of the foam there. And so I will cover that as well, but that's when I noticed that this is not gonna stand up. My succulents are too heavy. So I'm just gonna use this wood block. This is just a giant Jenga block from Five Below, but maybe um, a more heavy duty stand would help. And I'm just gonna cover up the sides with some more of that Spanish moss, doing a little row of hot glue and a little string of the Spanish moss and gluing that down. We're gonna go around and cover all the edges of that just so it's very finished from the front, the back, and the side of our little succulent pumpkin. I love this DIY, even though I do get injured here. I did, did have to censor it and cut it out because nobody wanted to see what's about to happen to your girl. I bled for y'all, okay? <laughs> so I am needing to make a pumpkin stem. So I thought I would make it out of rope. I'm gonna do the thicker brown rope this time because I want a very nice chunky um, pumpkin stem. So I'm gonna start a new row of this and kind of cut off about how long I think it should be. And I'm gonna cut three pieces of this wide brown rope in the same length. Now to start my pumpkin stem, I'm just gonna glue the three ends of the rope together like that, making sure not to burn myself. If only I could go back in time and warn myself not to injure myself here in a minute, right? And then I'm gonna have one go straight, two are gonna braid around it. So I glued that down. And then again, I'm gonna go around that center rope and glue it around, kind of at a diagonal. And just using hot glue as I go to glue that all the way up the one rope that is in the center of it all. And then I'm gonna trim that off so it's about the same length as the ones that I winded around. Now, if you get any hot glue on there and it's visible, you can always clean that up with a heat gun or a blow dryer. I love my heat gun. Um, I always post that in my videos below. It was only like $10 and it's probably the best craft investment I ever made. So definitely pick one up if you don't have one. And I'm just gonna glue the base of our pumpkin stem to the foam. I'm also gluing it to the back of the succulents there on top so that it will stand up nicely and kind of go off kind of crazily there to the side like a little pumpkin stem would. Super cute. 
I kind of wish I would have left it like that because <laughs> this is where your girl gets injured. Okay, I'm gonna use the wire jute from the Dollar Tree because it wasn't standing up quite as tall as I would like. And I'm just gonna wind that wired jute around our stem. It's gonna give me a nice wire um, stem that I can reposition in any way that I want leaving an extra piece that I just wrap around something like a pencil shape and give me that little curly Q tendril. I love to put those on all of my pumpkins. Fun little pumpkin touch. Now, I had to edit it there and you'll see I have a big bloody band-aid on my finger now because when I went to cut that wire um, jute, I cut with my heavy duty scissors right through my finger so bad that it's still gushing blood in that band-aid. <laughs> oh my gosh, I hope it heals while I'm on vacation. It's in such a bad spot on my finger. Oh, I hate hurting myself. But at least I was having fun crafting, right? Now I wanted a little coastal pumpkin leaf. And so I also picked up these burlap maple leaves at my Dollar Tree. And I am just going to cut it down smaller, just using the top piece to kind of have a piece that's a little bit more proportionate to my pumpkin, leaving the wire on there so I can just stab the wire down into the foam circle and kind of have it sitting kind of off to the side like that, like a little leaf on top of my pumpkin, just to give it a little bit of fun flair there. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really sweet. I think it actually does look like a pumpkin to me and I love that it's made out of succulents. Okay, I thought we could make a fall sign. I kinda wanna spell out the word fall. So I got four of these signs from the Dollar Tree. I love these, they're like a wood sign. They're nice and chunky with a little white sign in front. It has writing on it. And I thought we could make an F-A-L-L -L sign that spells out fall, but also make it tropical with my favorite wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. And this blue with palm leaf tropical print. And I wanna use that to cover up the little white sign that is on the front of the little wood sign. So I'm just kind of measuring and then just creasing it over the top of that sign so I'll know exactly where to cut Definitely isn't a scientific way to do this, but it kind of worked. I just kind of creased it like that. Two sides will automatically be square because I used the corner piece. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that out as straight as I can. Now, I kind of want to continue that pattern on all four of the signs. And so I'm gonna use that piece for reference and cut out the piece right next to it so that pattern will continue. And that will go on my second sign. It's okay if there's a little bit of white space around the edges. And then we're gonna cut our third and our fourth piece using those as templates and continuing that same palm leaf pattern across all the signs. Now, this is a pretty thick removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. I really hoped that I could just peel and stick that on the sign and it was gonna cover up any writing that's on there. Sometimes these can be a little tricky to open because you don't have the little space on there if you cut it up that opens it, but I got it and I lay it down on there. And then I was disappointed to find that you could read the black writing through there and I think you'd probably be able to see it in the final project. And so it is removable wallpaper. So I thought I would take my chances and just peel it back off. And then I can go in and paint over those words so that it doesn't show through like that. That would have been a fun time saver. It just didn't work. I'm using ivory chalk paint just because I think it's a little thicker, it's gonna cover a little bit better. And just doing a very sloppy coat over the top of these, trying not to get any on the wood sign behind it. And as you can see, after one coat of the chalk paint, you could still see the writing pretty well. Now, I'd, I don't need a perfect paint job here. I just need the writing not to be visible. So I think that's probably gonna be enough. So I'm just gonna go in with my heat gun and dry those and then try re-sticking 
the wallpaper on top and that worked out perfectly. Just gonna make sure that is smooth and down. And this is gonna coordinate these this fall sign with um, the tray that we made earlier. And it's gonna kinda go with all the vibes of the coastal fall. I really hope you guys are enjoying all of my coastal fall projects. I have new coastal fall. I have my best coastal fall from last year. I have so many fun coastal fall DIYs right now. And I'm just making sure it's dry before I put each one on. Again, keeping my pattern lined up on those because I think that kind of adds to the vibe of it, especially on a piece like that where a lot of the pattern is cut off. Now I'm just gonna go around and sand to make sure I have an even edge. If any of it's kind of overlapping, that will kind of remove that. And it's gonna kind of distress it a little bit, add a little bit of white to it. And I kind of like that. So I kind of distress the top of the wallpaper a little bit as well. And I thought we would spell out the word fall. Now I don't like to waste my money on those pre-made letters or anything like that. And a word like fall is going to be really easy to make with nice square boxy letters. And so I'm just using popsicle sticks. Um, these are like the super jumbos I think from Walmart. And I just cut a long piece for the F and I'm going to use that as a template to cut a long piece for each of the L's. I'm gonna do something else for the A, so I don't have to worry about that. And then short pieces for the parts of the F that stick out. And also for um, the L, each one of those is gonna have one of those short pieces as well, the same size as the F. And as you can see, there's no need to buy the pre-made pre letters. Um, these popsicle sticks are way cheaper. Now for the A, I thought we would do a starfish. I got these little wood starfishes from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree, and I thought it would make a perfect A, right? And it would give me another little coastal vibe to our coastal fall DIYs. Now, I don't really want them to be just the plain wood. I really kind of want them to look beachy ivory. So I'm just going over with a chunky brush and some ivory acrylic. And I am just giving them a very sloppy coat on top of the wood popsicle sticks and on the little starfish, letting a little bit of the wood show through just to give me that coastal distressed look. You can barely see it right now on my white background there. Now the starfish kind of has a little bit of a carved pattern on the top of it. And I am gonna add some, a few details on that. But I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the letters to our sign just with a thin bead of hot glue and glue these onto the front of that tropical pattern. We're gonna spell out our F, our L, and our L for fall. Just trying to make sure that they are as square up as possible so it kind of looks like a letter and I don't really want you to see the space in between. I'm also gonna go ahead and glue down my starfish, my other letters, kind of using that F as a reference so I know exactly where to put my L since I made it the same exact length. And we can do those final two letters in fall. Fall's a nice easy word to craft with because it's only four letters. And that looks pretty good. Now, I don't like that hole in the starfish, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with that wood leaf from the Dollar Tree and just tie a very simple little bow out of Dollar Tree, tree twine and glue that onto the hole so I don't have to worry about patching it or anything like that. My favorite way to cover those holes. Then I thought I would bring out that detail on the starfish. You could see it through the paint. And I'm just using a gold Sharpie, so I'll have a lot of control and I won't have any bleeding. It kind of turned out more of a coastal brown on that ivory paint. I really like the combination of the gold and ivory together. And again, I don't want it to look perfect. So I'm just gonna dry brush a tiny bit of ivory over that, just to break up some of the, li the lines a little bit in that, and give it a little bit more of a coastal flair. And this is how our full sign turned out. I think it's so sweet. What do you think? 
Okay, our last DIY is not really a DIY. <laughs> I found these at the Target Dollar Spot for $5. And I normally have a pennant banner on the top of my cabinet. These are the perfect length for that. And I think they kind of go with that wickery coastal vibes we got going on today. So all I have to do is untangle this, add some batteries to it, and we have lights for the top of our coastal fall display, which is a fun little thing for fall that you don't always see in traditional fall decor. And I would like to thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to do all of the YouTube things. Like, comment your favorite DIY below, and please subscribe. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers, and I can't wait to reach that milestone with you. Before we do our final reveal, I want to give a super thanks to the following Crafty Beach Bums for giving me super thanks underneath my videos. I appreciate you so much. Also, these Crafty Beach Bums for buying me a coffee. I always post a link in my descriptions below, and I would appreciate any support that you could give me. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Now stick around after the final reveal because I have a special surprise for you and you're going to love it. Like wind in our sails Hold on tight I can smell the shore It's right in front of us If we just hold on tight This vision that I saw Is getting closer every dawn Ooh, We are dreamers of
We are dreamers of the